This is the Canyon Grail CF SL7. It's the cheapest carbon grail you can buy and your most affordable route into biplane handlebar ownership. I'm going to talk quite a lot about this handlebar, which Canyon calls the hoverbar, because it's very much the defining feature of this bicycle. Canyon set out to build a comfortable, high-performance gravel bike, and they could have done that by using suspension the way Specialized did, for example, with the Future Shock. But instead, they designed this completely new and quite wacky handlebar, which incorporates lots of flex and also offers a variety of hand positions. Unusually, the handlebar's default position is actually in its highest stack position, so you can lower the whole bar assembly by removing spaces, but that would of course mean you don't have that lovely smooth curve from the top tube to the stem part of the cockpit. The hoverbar only really works with a frame that is designed around it. The actual stack of this frame would be incredibly low, so you could theoretically build an incredibly aggressive gravel bike around one of these frames and a conventional handlebar, but that's not Canyon's intention at all. Your feelings about the Grail will probably boil down largely to how you get on with the hoverbar. We'll talk about that a bit later, but first of all, let's have a look at this build. This is the 2020 Canyon Grail, and it's got GRX components where previously it had standard Shimano road kit on it. If you're used to Shimano's road ergonomics, then this stuff will be totally familiar. Performance-wise, it feels just like your usual 105 or Altegra group set. Shifting is quite crisp, quite light, and the braking is excellent, as we've come to expect from Shimano disc brakes. What you don't get with mechanical GRX components is the servo wave braking, which is something that only appears on the DI2 version. These being gravel-specific components, you get gravel-friendly gearing, so that's a 4630 double crank and an 11 to 34, so essentially almost like a mountain bike cassette at the back, which gives you a pretty broad range for just about all riding. Because it's a double though, the range is wide enough with enough small steps that it works quite well on the road and off. You get a nice set of alloy DT Swiss clinchers. They're a good width, um, they're tubeless ready out of the box, and they are fitted with the Schwalbe G1 Byte tanwall tyres, which most importantly look very cool, but also are a very versatile choice of tyre. They've got a kind of small knobby block pattern, a little bit like an old Kenda small block, but with round knobs instead of square ones. And they roll really, really well on tarmac, better than you'd think, while still being usefully more aggressive than just a slick off-road. So good all-round choice if you're using this as a kind of do-everything bike. Obviously, you hardcore gravel riders may choose to change tyres to suit the conditions more precisely, if you're planning on going bog snorkeling, you're probably going to want something more aggressive that really bites into the mud. But as an all-round choice, you could do a hell of a lot worse than these. As I've said, this frame is very much built to work with the hoverbar. In other respects, it's unmistakably a Canyon carbon frame. This is the SL version, which is the cheaper carbon, so it's a little bit heavier and lower grade than the top spec SLX model but in terms of overall shape, it's absolutely identical. In geometry, it's the same, and it's got the same kind of comfort-giving features. So obviously you get the standard dropped stays, which had deflection at the rear, and it's a skinny seat post, so there's plenty of flex at the back to add comfort when you're riding over bumpy surfaces. Less typically, there are actually mudguard mounts on this frame. We've lambasted Canyon in the past for not putting mounts on its more versatile models, like the Endurace range, but the Grail does have them. They are positioned a bit differently to some other bikes, but Canyon does, I think, sell some mud guards that fit it, or you should be able to get standard guards to fit it with a little bit of creativity. The Grail's ride is classic Canyon 2, by which I mean it's very good. It's a nice balance of comfort and stiffness. It's not like a ridiculously squishy, Kind of, it's not like riding a bike with rear suspension, but it's well tuned the frame and there's plenty of deflection built into it. And obviously with decent sized tires, there's a huge amount of latitude when it comes to tweaking comfort. You could always run a different size tire if you want to change the ride quality as well. 
Interestingly, Canyon doesn't actually endorse using 650B wheels with this bike. They do spec them on the two smaller sizes of the Grail, but the others are explicitly designed for 700C. You may well be able to use 650s though, it's probably more to do with them wanting to preserve their geometry precisely. Do what you like. I can't talk about the ride experience of this bike though without talking about fit, and this is where things get quite complicated. Now, I thought, being a good bike reviewer, I'm going to follow Canyon size recommendations. So I plugged my numbers into the Canyon website and it spat out that I was at the lower end for a small frame. Which is a little bit surprising because I do actually mostly ride medium sized bikes, but I thought I'll do what they say and see how it goes. On paper, the small grail has a top tube of 557 millimetres, which sounds quite long, but looking at this bike, it's immediately obvious that a top tube measurement may not be the most useful number because nothing is in quite the normal place at the front end. Canyon doesn't actually quote standard reach and stack numbers for this bike, and that's where things get quite confusing. They've created something called Reach Plus and Stack Plus, which are reach and stack numbers that also add in the dimensions of the cockpit. This is a completely proprietary thing, so you can look at Reach Plus and Stack Plus for Canyon's range, and if you do that, you'll find that the Grail sits in between the Endurace and the Ultimate in terms of how aggressive it is, but you can't use those numbers to compare to other brands because nobody else publishes them. So the numbers that Canyon quotes for this size small Grail are 442 millimeters of Reach Plus and 638 millimeters of Stack Plus. What became quite obvious to me as soon as I started riding this bike is that actually it's a little bit small for me and I would almost certainly be happier on a medium sized bike. So if I'm imagining that I'm a customer and I had bought this bike and maybe concluded that I hadn't necessarily got the size I was going to be happiest with, what do I do? According to Canyon, I'd have a couple of options. You can simply exchange the bike, as long as you haven't got it dirty, and then trade up to the next size, no problem. Or you can swap out the bar and they'll send you a new one in a different size. The hover bar comes in, I think, eight sizes in total, covering a range of lengths and widths. You don't get every width with every length. So for example, you can't have the longest stem with the narrowest bar, but there are quite a few grades in between. Obviously the issue with this is it's quite a complex cockpit and probably most of us aren't gonna to wanna to swap that out ourselves. So you might end up paying a shop to do that. That's a further expense on top of the cost of the bike. I guess my conclusion would be that make really, really sure that you understand Canyon sizing and that it works for you. The whole fit and sizing thing is an issue that to some extent is a problem always when you're buying bikes online, but it is compounded by having this very unusual one-piece cockpit. Obviously there are lots of race bikes that have integrated cockpits, but this takes things a level further because the dimensions aren't going to be that familiar to most people. Leaving aside any potential headaches about fit and sizing, the Grail is a really, really competent modern gravel bike. It's everything you'd expect from a good quality carbon gravel machine. The hover bar doesn't actually impact the riding experience drastically. It looks kind of weird from the rider's perspective, but you get used to that very quickly. And in terms of hand positions, it's not a million miles different. You've still got your usual spot up on the hoods. You've still got conventional position in the drops. But the added bonus of the hover bar is that you can kind of wrap your thumbs around when you're in the drop position, which is a really nice secure position for negotiating rocky terrain, say. The flexible top section is nice to have, but of course, if you are riding somewhere that's really rough, the chances are you aren't going to want to be on the tops because it's not the best position for control. But still, it's nice that it's there. Interestingly, despite the fact that this is a dedicated gravel cockpit, Canyon hasn't gone with the mega wide, mega flared drops approach, which some manufacturers favour because it's a way of making fine control easier when you're negotiating technical stuff. Personally, that really works for me. I've never really liked flared bars that much, but opinions will differ on that one. The nice thing about this setup is that actually, it's closer in overall feel to a road handlebar. 
and if like most people who buy gravel bikes you're going to do quite a bit of riding on the road as well as on trails then that works really well because I find that the huge flared out gravel bars can feel rather ungainly if you're riding them on tarmac where you don't need that technical control. If you're coming from a road bike, nothing about the Grail is going to feel particularly weird or different other than the visual aspect of the handlebar. It's got a fairly long wheelbase, it's 1020 millimetres on this size bike, uh, but nothing crazy for gravel bikes. Uh, the front end is a little bit slacker than a road bike, but again, it's not particularly extreme. It still feels quite nimble, but it doesn't scare you off-road. There isn't really anything that I would feel obliged to change out of the box on this because they have hit an all-round spec really well. The gearing is generous enough to cover most riding. You'll be able to climb really, really steep stuff with that 30, 34 low gear. And as I say, there's plenty of versatility for going on and off road. You could certainly race this bike if gravel racing is your jam. Although it's the cheapest of the carbon models, it's still pretty light. It's about nine kilos in this size. And although, as I say, this is heavily determined by what size you choose, it is reasonably aggressive. So if you're looking to ride competitively, this is a perfectly viable choice. Canyon wants this to be a do-it-all adventure bike, and there is actually a range of bike packing luggage from Topeak that's specific to this bike. So that's a bar bag, a frame bag, and a seat bag. One thing to consider if you are thinking of doing big adventurous rides is that mounting accessories on the hover bar does pose a few challenges. There are a couple of bosses on the underside which are designed to accept a computer mount that Canyon sells as an extra. However, a lot of other accessories that you would normally fit on a handlebar won't actually work because there's no round section anywhere on the bar. You can strap things to it, so if you've got lights with silicon straps, they'll work, but anything that uses a straightforward bar clamp just won't fit. So, the Grail is a very capable, very unusual looking gravel bike. I completely applaud Canyon for doing something different with it. I don't think many manufacturers would have gone quite this extreme on the handlebar front. That bar does come with some caveats. It presents some complications when it comes to fit and sizing. So if you are thinking of buying this bike, really, really do your research into what's gonna work for you. However, the bar does work in the real world as long as you can live with the practical implications of its very unusual shape. Also, and this probably won't worry most people buying a fancy new gravel bike, you will never be able to put a normal bar on this bike for any reason because it just won't work in terms of geometry. Like swans, the bar and the frame mate for life and you can't separate the two. If you want a bit of this grail goodness but you cannot live with the idea of the hover bar, there is the aluminium model as an alternative which is a much more conventional frame with a completely normal shaped bar. The aluminium model is a good bit cheaper. It comes in a variety of specs, but the equivalent GRX model is a bit over 500 quid less than this carbon bike, which is 2,049 pounds in the UK, plus 32.99 pounds delivery in the UK, which we should mention because delivery is not optional with a Canyon because they are online only. So, how do you feel about Canyon's Grail? Let us know what you think in the comments. Let us know whether you're looking forward to Canyon launching a triple-decker version of this bike next year, which will probably definitely happen. And don't forget, like and subscribe, and please hit that little bell icon so you get notified about all of our videos.